It's NFL Power Rankings Day, and I'm actually looking at the list right now, and I have to say, no Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets on this list. Yeah, Caleb Williams actually does look great in practice, but I mean, the Fall Guy previews also looked really good, and that totally bombed at the box office. Welcome to Applebee's. Can I interest you in America's favorite boneless wings for just 50 cents each? I have the 50 cent oh, bone. Cover your mouth. They could steal your order. I'll have the 50 cent boneless wings. I'll have the same. Perfect. They'll never see it coming. I've said it before and I'm sure I'll say it again, but Dan Campbell is the exact opposite of Brian Kelly. Turns out Dan's players actually like him. So it's that time of year again when a lot of men are gonna start neglecting their girlfriends and wives because they have a fantasy football team to fake coach and Wait, what 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 is this person saying that my fantasy football team isn't real? And he would win six hundred if that team won, and that I could have two hundred. I'd be the biggest fucking football fan in the world. So personally, North America, I absolutely love what the internet can give us. Look. Coming up on the Underrated Pod today, it's time for the NFL Rundown on today's show. I will give you my top 10 power rankings. <laughs> Let me just say this. If your team is actually afraid to go down to Brazil and play football, you can't be on my list this week. From Underrated Media, I'm Dave Dubai, and this is the Underrated Pod. This is Phoenix. What's up, North America, and welcome to the Underrated Pod. On today's show, we are doing our big NFL rundown show, which we will actually cover the top 10 teams in the National Football League heading into week number one, if you will, North America. This is my big power rankings show of the week. Now, I have to tell you, putting this particular list together was certainly difficult. It's always difficult during the first week of the NFL season because you can't really take anything that you see in preseason terribly seriously, can you? So I'm sure the Bears fans, the Jets fans, the Dolphins fans, and there was no way I was actually putting the Philadelphia Eagles on this list. A team that plays in Philadelphia, I repeat, a team that plays in Philadelphia, a city where there's actually been over 560 shootings so far this year is afraid to fly down to Brazil to play in a football game, a game in which they get in late Wednesday night, they take a bus to the stadium, they go to the stadium, they leave the stadium and go back to the hotel, spend the rest of the day in the hotel, and then go back on another bus the next day to the actual game. They never even have a chance <laughs> to explore Brazil. They actually stay in the hotel the whole time. And yet, this Philadelphia Eagles team is afraid to play in Brazil. It's crazy. All right, so my top 10 uh, power rankings for the first week of your National Football League season here we go, North America. In at number 10 is my Super Bowl pick to actually win the Super Bowl, and that is Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Chase actually did show up to practice today. Uh, no word yet if he actually practiced, but he did show up to practice. I'm sure that whole contract negotiation thing will get taken care of at some point. In at number nine is the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, we know that they have Kirk Cousins and everybody likes to make fun of Kirk Cousins. But the reality is the Minnesota Vikings are going to be missing Kirk Cousins all season long. They wish they still had Kirk Cousins despite the price tag. Look, this is a completely different Atlanta Falcons coaching staff. 
Atlanta Falcons team. There's a ton of talent in the backfield. There's a ton of talent on the wings. This is a fantastic football team. And assuming the coaching uh, does this team right, this is going to be a team that is probably going to have an opportunity to actually go pretty deep in the playoffs this year. In at number eight is Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. I'm assuming the Dak Prescott uh, contract's actually going to get taken care of. I like the Cowboys a lot. They'll play the running back position with a trio of running backs. Ultimately, this is a uh, excellent Dallas Cowboy team. I know a lot of you out there like to make fun of the Cowboy organization. 12 and 5, 12 and 5, 12 and 5. We should not disrespect the 12 and 5 regular season Dallas Cowboys until they actually prove otherwise. In at number seven is the Buffalo Bills. Just this is a vote for Josh Allen. Look, I looked at their roster. I have no idea who those wide receivers are. I was like, did they come from that UFL league? Anyways, I still love Josh Allen. Uh, He'll do whatever it takes. He's one of very few quarterbacks in the National Football League that can actually put an entire franchise on his shoulders. Josh Allen uh, and the Buffalo Bills, who, by the way, do have an excellent defense in at number seven. Number six is the very young Green Bay Packers. Uh, Assuming we see the same Jordan Love we saw towards the end of last season, you can see why I have the Packers in at number six, at least at the start of the season. Look, I don't think this Packer team is actually going to win the division, but I do think this Packer team is going to win 10 or 11 games this year, and they certainly have enough talent on both sides of the ball to actually pull that off. Number five, the Houston Texans, C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud, (laughs) C.J. Stroud. The only thing that could really take down the Houston Texans this year outside of injuries is that malcontent in one Stephon Diggs. If Stephon Diggs actually melts down week in and week out, look for the Houston Texans to actually find a reason to actually do something to Stephon Diggs. I mean, like put him on the injured reserve list. Ship him out before the end of the season. Stefan Diggs can be a cancer in a National Football League locker room. Just look at how Josh Allen was actually pretty excited to have Stefan Diggs out of the facility. In at number four, the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Trent Williams is back with the team. All the contracts have been taken care of. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The San Francisco 49ers are one of the best-run organizations in the National Football League, both from a general manager, president standpoint, as well as a coaching staff standpoint. They actually restructured Debo Samuel's contract earlier today, freeing up about $16 million worth of cap space. Look, the 49ers are for real. Yes, they are getting a little older But still, I like this 49er team a lot. A lot of people out there are playing up the whole Los Angeles Rams thing and Matthew Stafford and all of that. The the two-headed running back, the rookie running back in Los Angeles. I'm just not buying the defense yet with the Los Angeles Rams. Hence, they're not in the top 10 list at this point. In at number three, the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson who against the NFC throughout his career is actually 20 and one too bad. Lamar Jackson can't figure out how to actually beat the Kansas city chiefs. Look in an era where Tom Brady was the greatest quarterback of all time and coming up on his heels at this point is Patrick Mahomes. And with Patrick Mahomes playing as well as Patrick Mahomes has played, it is clear that uh, Lamar Jackson actually has a Patrick Mahomes glitch in his system. So until the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson are able to actually get over that glitch, the Kansas City Chiefs will most likely continue to dominate the AFC, at least in the playoffs. In at number two, 
Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions. Absolutely love Dan Campbell. Um, he's so fantastic. Uh, this is a uh, really deep roster. The roster has gotten better every year under Dan Campbell. They actually are my pick out of the NFC to actually go to the Super Bowl and lose to Joe Burrow and the Bengals. And in at number one, no disrespect at the start of the National Football League season. These are long seasons, North America, but you've got to give it to Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, uh, that defense and the rest of the moves that this Kansas City Chiefs team and ownership group actually made with the Chiefs over the offseason. This is, if you will, a vastly actually improved team over last year. I just think when we get to the playoffs, we'll see something out of Cincinnati uh, that um, is going to ultimately take down the Kansas City Chiefs. But for week one, you do or you should give the Kansas City Chiefs their respect. They are the defending, defending Super Bowl champions. All right, North America, that is my power rankings for week number one of your National Football League season. I mean, can you believe? I mean, seriously, that the Philadelphia Eagles, they had at least six videos from six different players complaining about actually having to go down to Brazil and play in a football game on a Friday. I mean, they actually are going to end up you know, having the weekend off. If you think about it, when it comes to international football games, this is the best possible scenario for the Philadelphia Eagles. They don't have to go to London. They don't have to go to Germany. They don't have to deal with Europe. They get to go to Brazil and play a game on a Friday. I'm just saying. All right, that's it for the underrated pod. As always, North America, I'm Dave DeBoff, wishing you all a tremendous rest of your sports viewing day to the cool music we go. This is Phoenix.